Charlie, take us in. This is the official podcast episode 266, I believe. Who cares? And we... Well, all right. Wow. And we've got our <laughs> good friend Ray hey. back in the Thunderdome. I'm back, dude. I'm back. <laughs> It was meant to sound a little friendly. To sleep, <laughs> yeah, it was meant you to be took like so long. <laughs> it was, it was so a, long to get there. Holy it, shit! <laughs> it was like who cares what number it is because Ray's here. You know that's what it was trying well, to be. We all just, <laughs> just woke came, up. Some of us are hungover. <laughs> Listen, it's fine. Just came across mm-hmm. as aggressive, really rude, even. <laughs> well, thank you guys for having me How back. Goes. Yeah, thank you for of joining course. us. I'm sorry. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Thank you. First guest of the new year. Starting off low and then only going up from here. Oh no, this is peak. This is peak official, baby. All You've right. been like I was saying, yeah. I was telling Ray before the show started. Ray uh, is one of the most requested guests of all time i would say like I, I constantly see people asking for him to come back on the show because you've been on the show i think two times previously yeah it was two times like, kind of almost back to back like years yeah, ago yeah i can't remember what exactly happened like you came on for one show and then just kind of stuck around for the episode yeah after i think you guys well. were going into <laughs> yeah. another one you're like you want to record this one too i'm like yeah i got nothing to do i'm still here sure <laughs> man a lot Whatever. has changed since back then we are so much more we we know what a podcast is now we've cleaned yeah, up our yeah, act yeah, yeah. that's do. fine that's fine oh, i'm just along for the ride we... i don't think anything's changed really maybe i'm insane yeah no I think we've reached a level of professionalism now. All right, that's that's a good question for you, Ray. What what do you think a podcast is? Can you enlighten us? Teach us the podcasting ways, maybe. Oh, a podcast is generally uh, three to four white dudes just talking for an hour, <laughs> an hour and a half, and uh, that's about it. Does Kaya? Well, that's why we brought white? Kaya in, so no, we can stand out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's not. Sometimes white. you bring in like Dying. you know a Puerto Rican like myself, or you have Kaya <laughs> for like you know the the minority take, but yeah. it's mostly just white guys talking. Yeah. So we're we really just going to ignore what passive. we were rambling about before we started recording yeah. about Ray's uh, condom collection. All right, why do you got to word it like that? Why, what do you think <laughs> you're throw me under the bus? <laughs> you came here talking saying, about condoms and shit? Yeah. Well, that's what we were... I thought it was a fun topic. We Before we started recording, we were talking about collecting things and brought up the idea of collecting condoms. Yeah. I thought that's a fun little collection to have. I wonder how many different varieties there are they would definitely collect by brand but maybe lubed and unlubed and materials flavor? and like maybe texture flavor, flavor. flavor. yeah colors yeah. Flavor. colors, yeah. colors. Yeah. colors. Well, someone in someone in chat put an article from a lady who has a 2000 uh, used condom collection and apparently oh, she does it, it by a person oh, oh used oh god oh that's <laughs> that's cool that's really cool <laughs> good for what, her the, the yeah. semen's like still pulled in there yeah well, I'm looking at the picture. So she has a headshot Shit. of the men that it belongs to above it. And wow. it just kind of looks like some kind of ritualistic it, thing. It doesn't even look like, like a, a, a headshot. It's like a zoom in of their face. It looks yeah. like a ransom photo. Do you photo. think she reveals yeah, it? I mean, yeah. Do you think she reveals it after the fact? Like after you fuck her, she's like, and now would you like to be added to the wall? And she <laughs> yeah. shows it you the room say, with everyone in it. It doesn't seem like they have a choice. So. It seems like because she- um, it says her boyfriend found it nasty and broke up after Aww. some time when the woman asked drunk friends who had sex in her bed to leave their used condoms as well. well that's oh, fuck oh so it wasn't even people sure. she fucked. Oh, thank oh. God. Why is that? Thank God. That's so much worse. <laughs> I mean, too. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't know. 2,000 partners? That's such a high risk of STDs and shit. Uh, She's collecting condoms on her wall, Andrew. STDs is like the least of her problems. She's got sperm. She's got a her lot going on. Walls. Yeah. yeah. She, oh, she has major daddy issues, I would assume. Yeah. It says her father is helping her. Oh, what? What, what does that mean? I'm sure he does by ruining her. Uh, yeah, helping know. how? <laughs> he, t- he takes the photos Christ. of the guys. <laughs> he's a she's, photographer. Aiming, <laughs> she's aiming for a the collection collector. of more than 10,000. That's a lot of oh, sex. Well, th- that is. This was back in 2017, so uh, she's probably made it by now. She's doubled that number, yeah. Doesn't does, condoms have to get gross pretty quickly, like like smelly and shit, right? If you leave them around? Uh, she likes you know, it. I don't know. I, you know, I don't collect, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Just want to make it clear. <laughs> well, you brought this topic, Ray. You guys didn't get to hear it, but Ray came into our Discord for recording, and he said, guys, I've started condom collecting, and I can't wait to talk about it. What have you guys been up to? <laughs> yeah. And that's about you guys talking years. about my collection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got three years worth of condoms built up. 
It's all just it, it's a it's a room just full of condoms with his face above every single condom. <laughs> yeah, they're all Ray's photo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody loves their own brand. I'm just you know <laughs> want to be surrounded by greatness. Oh man, <laughs> ew. Uh, apparently, the most expensive condom she has cost her seventy-seven dollars. What? Oh, like a special brand, or like she know. paid for the guy? All it says is that she paid seventy-seven dollars for it. That's it. It's very vague. Mm. Yeah. That is vague. <laughs> so, do you think that means maybe she's buying these condoms off people as well? Because you already said that she like yeah. scavenged some condoms from people who are fucking in her room or something. Oh wait, do, I well, found it, it important. I mean, I found an important detail we missed. She has a condom fetish. Well, oh, that's why she does tell. it. Oh, yeah, you don't say. Yeah. It turns yeah, it around. I, I got the impression what? that she didn't like condoms. I thought she was just weird. I thought she was just weird and obsessive or whatever, but no, she actually gets turned on by it. That's I, different. It's not mutually exclusive. Really? She can be super weird and obsessive <laughs> about her fetish, which she clearly is. Good for her. I'm proud of her now. Do you guys have anything where you've, <laughs> where you, <laughs> I can't finish the sentence, where you would do something like this? Like, is there some kind of fetish that you could see ruling your lives or collection? No. Not really, but there's no. a, there's like a video I think of like to show people sometimes because it's one that I think about pretty often now. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's the video of that girl who's like laying on the carpet with goggles on and then a woman like four times her size does like a fucking like a giant cannonball into her chest and then farts on her. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, every time I that. see it, every time I see it, I fucking laugh. They're fully clothed and everything. It's just like this very, like rather lanky girl who's wearing goggles and she's laying like spread eagle on the floor, looking up. And then out of nowhere comes like this absolute Bo like bomb, just a blast, full like leg spread, ass to chest, and she lands on her chest, and like the air from her lungs escapes her mouth. She goes, Ugh! and then she farts on her. I appreciate you appreciate wearing goggles. You know, I got to be safe when you're doing shit like this. Don't, don't want to get pink eye. You don't, you don't want, want the pink goggles. Yeah. Well, you don't want pink eye. Yeah, but they're fully clothed, there's, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, but still, there's a pink eye. Yeah, yeah. All right, broken fair. ribs are one thing, but sorry. pink eye. Come on. Oh, I thought I thought oh, you yeah. said they were <clears throat> naked. They're Do you think she collects fart goggles? What has to happen in your brain? For this to be like hot to you to get farted on. <laughs> <laughs> How is that just farted on? It was like a full on WWE stunt. It was amazing. That's what's always baffling to me is that these people somehow find each other. Like it's not just enough yeah. that there's one person with this fetish where you need to jump on someone to get your kink. Well, yeah. jump on someone and fart uh, to get your kink. But it's actually that they find someone else to participate in their kink. And well, then there's someone out there for everyone. It. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I guess I mean, it's a beautiful message. Yeah. Like, the that's the, the power of the internet. It is beautiful you know? in a way. Yeah, that's the power of the internet. You just find a website so and talk to another user. That's it. Yeah, the internet has made it a whole lot easier. You're right. Now it's not mm -hmm. so beautiful. Imagine Jackson the suffering and the pain of someone living in the '50s with these kind of fetishes. Not only would you not have the means of communication, but you'd be repressed by society because back then having this weird stuff was just totally unacceptable and you'd, not allowed. You'd, prob you'd probably be executed. Yeah. Yeah. You'd Straight be given a haircut and a suit and told days. to fuck off. <laughs> condoms existed back then, right? How long have condoms been a thing for? Uh, uh, I think a very uh, long time. Maybe not in the shape so how they are now. 1839. When? 1839 was See, the first like condom. The, it's like the first yeah. invention. Yeah. Holy that, shit. That, yeah, it was fire and then condoms in that order <laughs> those days. <Yeah>. Like, <laughs> wood? Wow. <laughs> It led straight to the like uh, industrial revolution. They needed batteries <laughs> yeah. to produce these condoms. Wow, but apparently, so that's the first like modern condom. Apparently, they've been in use for as early as the 1500s, where they would use animal skin condoms. Yeah, I knew, uh, there's like lambskin uh, condoms. Yeah, we should bring those back. Hmm. We yeah. should. Well, we still oh, have lambskin cool. condoms, I think, don't we? I mean, we sh sure. Someone's saying that what? there were wooded prototypes, wood condoms. Wood. Oh Oof. God. What's the what point? That sounds that sounds painful for everyone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's the, what is yeah. the just raw dog at yeah, that point? Doesn't sound good at all. Yeah, really. <laughs> what is the point of using a wooden condom? You're just like using a dildo then. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, splinters right there. Love it. Fuck yeah. That's so dumb. <laughs> I wish. Surely we're getting to the point where we can just install like a light switch on our testicles to turn off sperm production. 
<laughs> a light switch. <laughs> yeah. A light switch. Like, like a little like, dial. Hmm. Yeah. Today I don't feel like making sperm, and you just hear a shutting down noise from your balls. <laughs> Man, that'd be awesome if there was a dial in your testicle, and you could just ramp it up for maximum like <laughs> sperm. <laughs> just the biggest. Move, honey, move! There's a fly on the wall. <laughs> I can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're right. Nothing really has changed. <laughs> yeah, no, this is the same show. <laughs> Hell yeah. Three, 250 episodes of this. Um, <laughs> nope. <laughs> do you guys have any, like, uh, like odd misconceptions about sex that you still harbor? Is there anything, like, you've repressed so much that you find weird about sex? What are you, you talking about? Yeah, what do you ask? Oh, right. what, what, what do you think is weird about sex? Like some some funny sex topics for Ray. I am surprised <laughs> that my wife still has sex with me. That's what I'm surprised about. <laughs> oh, just in general. Well, that's right. Ray is married. I'm married now. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does that mean we can't a, talk about sex? I'm, I'm a big boy. <laughs> yeah, actually, I don't have sex anymore. So can you please? I'm triggered. Can you change the subject? <laughs> So, Ray, that's a good question. <laughs> Compared to when you were just together in a relationship to now that you're officially actually married, what's really changed? What's different? Uh, literally nothing. Everything is okay. ki kind of the same. You know, I mean, we, we were together for six years before we got married. So, uh, you know, we kind of had everything figured out. And then getting married was more of just, a, I guess, a title change. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we got married in her backyard, a, a little quick ceremony. This actually happened right before, like, COVID hit. Um, so we caused COVID. Sorry about that. Getting married. We, we, uh, <laughs> fucked that up. Uh, but yeah, a little ceremony. And, uh, then we kind of just went back to normal, you know, we went back to just living our life and doing our, doing our normal shit. So was marriage like a super meaningful thing for both of you or was it just- It was. We didn't want to have like a big wedding because- they're really expensive and we didn't want to have to go with the whole thing with like, who do we invite? And then do the people we don't invite get really mad and petty and stuff like that. So we're like, ah, fuck it. We'll just do it in our backyard. Just us. And super quick. Uh, and I mean, uh, uh, we're still mad that you didn't invite us to that backyard. Yeah. Wedding, about yeah, that. Yeah, I'm sorry. My, my bad. Yeah. It, it, it's been died. multiple years since we I was on the podcast. I'm like, I don't know if they, I don't know if they still like me or not. So. Well, we yeah, do. we just got a, uh, got eloped in the backyard. That's, that's, that's really nice. It's, it's yeah, super little romantic thing, and we still haven't gone on our honeymoon yet. Hopefully soon, <laughs> but we'll see. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, so that's that's just in the back pocket. Yeah, one day I'd like to go on one, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you can you can go visit someone else's backyard, maybe. Yeah, for a honeymoon trip. Yeah. Yeah. Should go on a cruise. Have you guys ever like thought about going on a cruise ever? I've been because on a cruise three this, times. Like, the oh yeah, how was it? Depresses me. Awful. I hated it every yeah. time. Oh. I was forced to go oh. by my family. Well, why and do I, you keep ooh, doing it? Fucking miserable. What, it's, I think it was forced by his family. What is it about family. cruises that have this like? It has a magical ability to draw people in, even though no one ever says anything good about cruises. Oh, and big boat. Oh, just saw, well, like, big boat. Cool. Well, in my defense, <laughs> in my defense, I did not want to go at all. But at the time, I was like fourteen and fifteen, so I w I had oh, to go. Oh, that's right. uh, my parents okay. dragged me along. You I hated it. Cruises I, in the it was of fucking one awful. Year? Uh, it was too close together, and then one another one when I was like seventeen or something. Okay, so yeah, yeah they enough. were they were fucking oh, God, awful. Like every awful. one of them. I don't get the point of cruises. It's just a boat. Why you could go to a million so, more interesting cruises, places. Cruises so are a they're a they're a <laughs> boomer vacation. Because boomers want to be, like, treated like royalty. That's their fucking power fantasy. That's what they jack off to. They go, oh, I want I want to sit by the pool and drink my daiquiri and have a man walk up and say, do you need anything else, sir? And I want to just sit in my room and watch my TV and not have to worry about anything like my credit card debt or my job. And that's my whole life. And that's all they want. And they want to do it on a boat so they don't have any obligations. And it's the most boring shit on the planet, but it's what they want. It sucks. Yep. Bro, if that's what you want, just splurge like on a good hotel for a couple of nights. Like, why would you want to be adrift at the sea? Yeah, and then I, I saw like that. this article that said during COVID, you shouldn't go on a cruise, um, whether you're vaccinated or not. It doesn't matter. You shouldn't do it. Like, bro, did you forget about like your toilets overflowing and everybody being stuck on a shit boat? <laughs> <laughs> like, you're worried yeah. about COVID? It's, it's, it's like a drink of your worries. Wasn't there like a it's cruise ship that had people stuck on board that they couldn't leave because yeah, of COVID? That was in Australia, yeah. I think. Over oh, here. That sucks. Maybe. 
yeah. out of nowhere. Yeah, like, well, they weren't stuck out at sea, like, the, the captain vanished <laughs> and there was no way to pilot it or something. They were stuck in, like, the dock. The yeah, they harbor. were just docked. <laughs> and it wasn't yeah. even, like... It wasn't like they were stuck in vacation mode, you know, like, uh, oh, God forbid we have to spend more time sipping margaritas on the deck or whatever. No, they, they like had to ration pieces of bread because they were running out yeah, of food. Cool vacation. <laughs> yeah. Shit. What? So it's all it's all part of the fantasy initially, because you're like, I'm going to be on a boat, too. I'm going to be on the ocean. I'm going to yeah, sail from the island to and, island or whatever. Yeah, yeah have a getaway. Island, yeah. But what people don't realize is you're stuck on a hotel on the water that has no internet unless you pay a stupid oh, amount of God. money for it. So no then internet. you would get a much better bang for your buck just staying at a very fancy hotel on a beach. It's the how same exactly. exact experience. If there's no internet, how am I meant to log on to Twitter each day and get mad? Yeah, yeah and, and talk posts. about how shitty the cruise is. Yeah. <laughs> also, open water scares me, so I'm just going to stay on land. Mm. Oh, yes. Thank you. Finally, a, a man of my kin. Yeah. Like, creepy, creepy shit. I do not want to be on a boat at night. I think there's way creepier shit. just look out and see nothing but darkness. There's way creepier shit than open water. Open water is like the one thing that doesn't scare me. What, what's creepier than open water? The condom room, for one. <laughs> well, I guess we're going to be, like, vacationing in her condom room. Could do. Four days stay in the room, dude, in her bedroom. <laughs> what? Are you serious? Like, Ew. even to you, Charlie, open water is, like, the creepiest thing? As a place to vacation? Yeah. Oh, that is, like, place one of vacation. the worst places you could possibly vacation, in my opinion. Well, what about, like, a haunted Louisiana in, like, Bayou? Well, there's no such thing as like a haunted mansion or anything. I'm not exactly like the Eddie too Murphy concerned. movie. Like you want to get a DVD and watch it in Louisiana. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, I don't think there's ever going to be a situation where like a haunted stay at a hotel resort. Not true. What is about, ever going to be like what bad? About, what about the theme park island in Sco the first Scooby Doo movie? That was pretty scary. Oh, true. That was pretty. That was pretty. Spooky. I went on a vacation there. But Jackson, you you see what you have to do to even. Like, br come near how creepy open water is. You have to the resort to ghosts and demons and shit. Like, <laughs> all of those things. You know, the, the ocean is haunted. You realize this, right? Like, everything in the ocean is gross. Yeah. And creepy. No, it's just gross because we don't understand it or we don't, like, see it frequently. I don't, yeah, no, I don't, th I don't think it's that. I don't think the uh, open water is... If you know how to swim, you're fine. No, yeah, I'm sure you can swim back to land. Swim forever. <laughs> You'll be fine. Jackson's just Aquaman. That's yeah, all there is to it, dude. You want to know the worst part of a cruise, though? They didn't have ExpressVPN. Oh. Oh. How can Tell they me more. rectify yeah. that? How so when you go on a cruise, then? if you out there want to go on a cruise because you have brain damage and you're actually stupid, you'll find that the <laughs> internet costs, no joke, like $20 per hour per use or some shit. It's absolutely ridiculous. But then you'll find they don't even encrypt their fucking data. They don't even protect themselves Dude, online. I hate that. They I don't hate even that. know that there's a $5 billion class action lawsuit against a company in California where it's accused of secretly collecting user data. And that company is called Google. Oh, one of the biggest yeah. fucking Gasp. companies on the planet. Yeah. Or you could stay at home, which is good because COVID. You don't have to go on a stupid big boat full of dumb fantasies that will never come true. And you can use ExpressVPN and use, live a sensible, contained, happy, protected life. ExpressVPN is going to make sure that every time you connect to the internet, you will get a random IP address shared by other ExpressVPN customers, meaning it's harder for third parties to identify who you are and harvest your data. It's easy to use and works on any device you've got, phone, laptop, smart TV. It might not work on your cruise ship that you own, but that's because you should be out of business. All you have to do <laughs> is tap one button for instant <laughs> protection. You can also, of course, change your location, check out different locations, streaming services. That's a big, big thing if you live out in Europe and want our incredible American shows like Best Cake and Fastest Cake and Bake the Cake 6. Big My favorite theory, Netflix shows. Love those. Anyhow, if you really want to go incognito and protect yourself and your privacy, secure yourself with the number one rated VPN, expressvpn.com slash official, and get three extra months for free. expressvpn.com slash official. Go to expressvpn.com slash official to learn more and get three months for free. Awesome. Thank you, ExpressVPN.
you that was know, a great ad read. He's Thank you. Get, he's getting really good at those ad Very reads. Very professional. Andrew's Thank great you. at ad reads. Thank you. Um, what's even more stupid than these cruise ships is the people that buy like mega yachts. I think that's also fucking stupid. Oh, like at the very least, it's just them though. Yeah, but they're so, so they expensive. Yeah, it's for it private least. use, and I get that part. You know. Well, when you have so much money, yeah, like why not though? But and why not? Yeah, buy a yacht. I mean, how much time I mean, are you realistically actually going to spend on it? Well, think. I mean, like it's more of a wealth kind of you know power thing. Steven yeah, like Spielberg, thing. for example. Yeah, Steven Spielberg, for example, recently bought a couple billion dollar yacht. It has a full size basketball court. Now, you look at Steven Spielberg and tell me realistically how often he plays a full game of basketball. <laughs> that dude dunks. He dunks hard. Yeah, yeah. He leaps. He <laughs> bounces through the air. It's more of a using your money kind of thing. If you were super rich, uh, Ray, not saying that you're not, but if you were super rich, what would you what would you splurge on, Ray? Ooh, what would I splurge on? Yeah. It's probably the generic, like, I guess, good guy answer. I'd probably, like, help out my family a bit. I'm pretty happy where I am right now. Like, I don't need, like, a big, ginormous mansion <laughs> for me, my wife, and the dogs. Yeah. We just, we like our house. Just, you know, make sure we're, we're, we're set and, yeah. uh, you know, help out friends and family. Okay. Right. Now, but now for your fun answer. Oh, <laughs> you really do. Uh, ooh, I'd, uh, I'd buy rooster teeth and I'd run the company. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, somebody has to. Yeah, so somebody has to do it. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> Is there some kind of revenge there where you're just going to run it into the ground? No, no, oh, I just... He just needs to, if, if he wants it to run into the ground, he just does nothing. Oh, okay. He just doing what he's doing. Hey, my mom's calling. I gotta go. Sorry. Just, <laughs> something just came up. <laughs> just a little zinger in there, there with go. all the controversy. Thank, thank you. Charlie, your check's oh, in the mail. <laughs> well, Wait, the, uh, this it was... Uh, oh, it's not really controversy i mean it's just it's kind of old it's kind of yeah, old yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's old probably, news at this point no no it's no, probably no. big news if you search rooster teeth the top recommended question is what killed rooster teeth oh shit <laughs> is that seriously is that, is that, are you, is that true that's true that is the top question asked on google about rooster teeth oh holy shit yeah that is oh my god wow Ooh. yikes is, is yeah. that like is that from your own like is it uh is your search history like factored into that at all no, no I, I i'm on a yeah i'm on like incognito mode and that was the first one first question well then god damn yeah why well, do you have almost, any insight do, do i left you, seven do, years ago so you can't blame <laughs> it on me <laughs> so he's well, been meticulously fact checking ever since yeah we can actually oh, ray uh, you leaving might have caused it to go downhill so, oh yeah, it was, yeah what, i haven't clicked the question, maybe it's going to attribute it to you. When Ray left, the rooster teeth couldn't recover. <laughs> I'll, you know, I'll, I'll take the blame. It's fine. What a coincidence <laughs> if someone has to take that, the blame, I'll do it. What a coincidence that seven years ago, right around when Ray left, rooster teeth started going downhill hard. I just, isn't that weird? <laughs> That's, you know, crazy coincidence. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> no, yeah, I had, must to, leave, be, I had you, to leave the stream. You must be so fucking tired of hearing about Rooster Teeth at this uh, point. Every day, yeah. at least once on stream. Yeah. Someone will bring oh, it up. It's, uh, I can't imagine. Man, man. It is what it is, you know. I the mean, only 99. way you escape that is no, if you yeah. go on a cruise. Yeah. yeah, it's true. No internet. That's very true. Exactly. Ew. No. <laughs> Even then, <laughs> no don't do it. Yeah, I think I'd rather take the, the questions than be on the open water for days at a time. I, st I just don't understand. I don't understand. I get that, like, it's the fear of the unknown. Yeah. But that's, like, the same thing as just being scared of the dark, really. Well, it's not really the fear of the unknown, Jackson. You're trapped in the unknown. You can't just leave. It's yeah. like, yeah, I'm tired of the cruise. I'm gonna go home now. You can't. Yeah, but you can and say no that. I'm scared of the dark, you dickhead. It's what's in the dark. That's, that's what scary. I'm, that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm saying it's well, the no fear one's of the afraid, unknown. Well, like, people are afraid. Of no dark. one's just afraid of darkness. They're afraid of what uh, could be in the dark as well. Dark's pretty that's scary. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, though. It's the fear of the unknown. That's what you're scared of. You're not. Yeah. No, it's being trapped in the unknown, Jackson. What does you that mean? This isn't like Stranger Things. There's no the unknown. No, you can't it leave. Is. You can't leave. You the boat. literally can't leave. It's a you can't ship. get. What? So if it breaks down, how are you getting home? You can't get back to land. You're stuck on the ship, is what he's saying. Exactly. They'll, they'll fly out planes or They don't do that. What? No, what? they only do that for medical emergencies. That's it. 
Yeah, but if the fucking... And also, you have to pay for it. I, I think it's a medical emergency if the ship is currently sinking. They... No. Well, if it's ship Jackson, sinking... Jackson, they're gonna let you drift. Because they're sociopaths. Because everybody working in that industry, they don't care about mm. you. They, they literally let people just, like, uh, stuck in a harbor for months well, while they were eating breadcrumbs. That was that was regular. That was like COVID regulations. That wasn't the. And, of and Jackson, we don't even have to make it that drastic of an argument. If you go to a nice fancy hotel and you say, "Oh, this sucks. I think I'll go home." You can do that. But if you go to a cruise ship and you go, "Oh, this sucks. What day are we on? One of eight. <laughs> <Yeah>. All right. <laughs> that what was if twenty me? minutes. Yeah. Fuck. It's a commitment. What if you go on like a one? Uh, like a 12 day trip to the Sahara Desert or Mount Everest or something really obscure and like uh, isolated, remote. That's kind of the same thing. Well, right? Mount Everest isn't isolated or remote at all anymore. It's a fucking tourist industry. There's like hotels on the way up. Yes. And I'm dead bodies, kidding. yeah. Yeah, there's entire <laughs> trail lines up to the top of Mount Everest that you can follow. They cycle people in like a factory. Mount Everest is a scam. Don't do it. I hate I hate cruise ships as much as the next guy. I think it's the dumb holiday destination, but I don't I, I just don't find it like scary or anything like that. I just think it's boring. That's fair. Well, I don't think the cruise ship is itself scary. I'm just like I don't Jackson, have you ever been like a, to the beach at night and looked? Yeah, it's like the best time to go to the beach. Everything is. It is so dark. It is. I guess better question. Fuck have that. you ever been deep sea fishing or out deep sea, Jackson? Have you? Yeah. What was it like? It sucks. It's fucking trash. <laughs> and you feel completely stranded. Charlie wouldn't stop screaming the whole time. This is before I... It was when I was younger, so well before my motion sickness really started to get... got bad. And I still hated it, just because you're just surrounded by open water, and there's nothing you can do. You're just at the mercy of whenever someone's ready to go in, or whenever your allotted time is over. You can't do anything except just sit there and wait. Well, that's... Yeah, that's... It's just boring. It's not scary. Plus... But it is scary though, because imagine the you don't get back. You just the the engine malfunctions. Now you're just out there. I could there. say that in the Sahara Desert as well. I could say I'm not going to get back. I'm going to die of thirst. What are you doing yeah, in the Sahara, Sahara Desert? Desert? What are you doing in the desert? <laughs> Deep sea fishing. <laughs> fishing for sandworms. I don't know. I, I I don't know. I don't know why you go out of the fucking ocean to go deep sea diving or fishing, whatever the fuck you said. It to sounds fish. boring. Why would you go out there? Well, to fish, but in the case of a yacht, you go out there to vacation. Ah, it's so dumb. It is but it becomes so more like a prison. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just take umbrage with it being scary to you guys. I think you, you're pussies. What are you afraid of, Jackson? Oh, we are what we eat, Jackson. Yeah, what are you afraid of? <laughs> Jackson eats fear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was... Like the th probably the thing I was most afraid of, uh, is just driving. In the last like ten, twelve years, I haven't I haven't had my like oh, yeah. learners or anything. I did that in the last two weeks though, so I've conquered my fear. So oh nice. You, now you, now you guys need to go out and start I don't know diving deep deep sea diving or something. Hanging out in the Sahara Desert. Mm, nope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's scared of right deserts? After this? No one's scared of deserts. That's not a fear. What are you scared of, Ray? I, I'm actually curious. Uh, heights. Heights is my main yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah, same. Mm. Mm -hmm. I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. Is, yeah but that's, that's also like the fear of the unknown. Like, what's below you, you know? Death if I no, fall. Yeah, no, <laughs> fuck up, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> does everything just come back to the fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown. <laughs> I mean, that's the primal. Th is that how you explain my, my fear of flying as well? Yes. The fear of the unknown. Well, yeah. There's a lot of variables there. Like, will you crash or not? It's unknown. <laughs> well, it's 50-50. It's Either you do or you don't. Yeah, yeah I guess. That's yeah, right. Every time you fly, it's a coin correct. flip. It's 50-50. If you knew you were going to crash, it wouldn't be as scary, I guess. Yeah, I mean. Sort of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, thank God this plane's going to crash. I feel so much better. Guys, being I knew on it was it. coming. I told uh, yeah. you. <laughs> Certainty. <laughs> <laughs> I can relax now that I know. Yeah. Oh, glad that's over. Yeah, the plane is nose diving, but I saw it coming. <laughs> It seriously must be what all fear comes down to. Can you think of anything that's not the fear? Like, all of your fears are down to it just being such a new experience or something that you haven't experienced. So it's a, it is always the fear of the unknown. Think of something that you're actually scared of that's, like, tangible and something that is actively something that you've experienced. 
What? F- flying? What? What do you mean? It's, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty confused stabbed. on the question. Yeah, but you're, everything. No, you're not scared. There's plenty of things that you know and that are scary, like fire. Yeah, but you're scared of it because of the crash. Fire. You're scared of it because of the crash, and you've never experienced the crash. <laughs> it could be good. <laughs> well, you never experienced getting <laughs> shot. Would you jump in front of a bullet? No, I'm saying uh, it's all right to be scared of being shot because I've never experienced it. So I'm scared of the unknown of being shot. <laughs> Do you think getting shot one time would be like, oh, I'm not afraid of this anymore. This is kind of cool. (laughs) (laughs) Shoot me again, but like in the head. Yeah, make it harder this time. (laughs) Yeah, make it hurt more. (laughs) Jesus. Actually try, bitch. So, um... No, plenty of... Ray, have you watched The Matrix yet? The new one? The new Matrix? No, I haven't. I did rewatch the first one recently, but I've heard kind of uh, mixed things about the new one. But I couldn't I imagine asked. it being any, like, I couldn't I imagine it being it. amazing. Yeah, what'd you think? Uh, well, so, it's a continuation of last week, because last week these three boys brought up how awful it is, and, uh, I just wanted to say, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> you guys it are right. It was god-awful. It was god-fucking-awful, yeah. and there was, a, there was a point I wanted to bring up that you guys, I don't think, mentioned specifically. You remember how you didn't like the little robot animal friends that show up? Yeah, mm-hmm. Kujaku. Yeah, so those were awful and terrible, but the thing that I've noticed and really hated was one of them was a tiny mantis. It did absolutely nothing in the movie except get a fist bump. That was it. Yeah. That was its whole purpose. Yeah, you, Are they just made to, like, sell though. merch? You think? Yes. A hundred percent. Ah. They serve no point in the movie other than to, like, be like, whoa, cool robot friends. That's a shame. Do you like the zombies, though? Uh, so the only part in the movie, and spoilers for this movie, Ray, it's a piece of shit. You I know, it's care. fine. It's fine. Okay. No, you go go the for it. The only part of the movie I genuinely thought was fun and inventive and enjoyable was when they get so desperate to stop Neo and Trinity, they start launching themselves out windows like missiles. I thought that was fun. I like that. Other than that, when the movie was, the zombies, I guess. Yeah. That's when they're driving the motorcycle, yeah. And everyone starts, like, jumping out windows to try to stop them and shit. I like that. But I heard everything a couple else people in the movie say, was just uh, awful. Like Keanu Reeves and Carrie Ann Moss were kind of just like all right in it. Like they, they like, have no chemistry. Yeah, they like, they really they don't connect. Like that. No, no, you can't do anything. It's not their fault. Like they literally uh, take the took these characters and they like the writers took a massive shit on their faces. There, there's nothing. I mean, they when could the have first done, Matrix like, movie came out, Neo's like entire twenty years ago, ninety nine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, Jesus, ninety nine. Yeah, God. yeah, yeah. Twenty like, years. It, it has were, the like, same problem okay. that the fucking Star Wars sequels and prequels have. It's like the Star Wars prequels are bad. The Matrix sequels are bad, but at least they're ambitious. They tried things and went big and did new things and tried to expand the universe. Meanwhile, mm-hmm. Rate Resurrections and the Star Wars sequels, they just feel so like modern movie boring. They're so bland. just cliched and bland and uninteresting and unexciting. I watched a recap of the first trilogy before watching Resurrections to refresh my memory. There mm-hmm. are so many quotable moments from the first movie. It's insane. There are so many one-liners and like responses to things that people know by heart you could rattle them off over and over meanwhile in resurrections i cannot remember a single thing anyone said it was all boring nope. nonsense i can't even remember like any good fight scene or anything yeah i was about to say was the action characters. at least like fun or good or yeah. anything no like it's that. terrible no there's like no, two fights really no and they're horribly choreographed they look sloppy and awkward it was bad yeah and it's very quick cut and lazy and no. yeah, again the character like American is like, all of a sudden Neo doesn't yeah. give a shit about mm-hmm. there's a scene where a like, character like the leader of the go ahead Kyle. Oh, sorry go ahead uh, well, so there's a scene where <laughs> a character good. is he shows up to a fight there's like a big fight with Neo and his whole group and there's a character watching it and like spouting nonsense there's mm-hmm. a wide angle while he's watching everyone fight pay attention to the individual fights during that wide angle everyone's moving at like 10% speed they are not at all trying. It's fucking sloppy. No. And is it like callback? It's ass callback up. city? Is it just constant callbacks to the previous? Yes. Yeah. It's yeah, member we established that. Yeah. But I saw yeah, one example, already, pretty but... egregious example of like um, the the Mr. S- uh, the Agent Smith character in this movie. He does the same kind of punch through a like a what do you call it? Like a concrete beam. 
Uh, yeah. that's the same oh, as like yeah. the first movie it's so, never like, ending oh also that's um, so exhausting yeah uh, so what I was talking about last episode before I saw the movie where I was like oh Smith sacrifices himself I heard something like that so Smith saves the day for literally no reason yeah, he oh, yeah. No, no reason, reason whatsoever no. and then he leaves no for motivation no to do it <laughs> He's no like, reason hey. Hey, I'm here now, and I yeah. save you. Also, and I'm more Trinity, powerful than the architect. God, Trinity so and Neo bad. touching hands and causing a shockwave. Why does that happen? That's never happened before. Oh, There's no reason he's for the, that he's to the happen. One. He's the one. Well, she's it, it, the one. No, he's the one. How dare you? No. I don't, listen, I'm that, talking to my ass. That's there. the annoying part, yeah. Ray. They they take a big fucking stinky log on the whole. He's the one <laughs> narrative arc because yeah. now they have a new human city. It's a new human city and Neo arrives and the leader of the city is like, Neo, I can't let you go out and fight the fucking machines for Trinity or whatever. Like, you're going to get us all killed. This is the last chance for humanity. And Neo just goes, oh, no, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> That like sounds, he cares more about that sounds cool. pussy now than saving well, mankind. Well, listen, Kaya, look, there's a lot of things in that movie to be frustrated about. For example, Naomi sees Neo after 60 years and her first thought is throw him in jail. But <laughs> what you shouldn't be thrown in jail for is using FanDuel. Because oh, tell me more. Mm -hmm. The thing with FanDuel Sportsbook is if you refer a friend to it, it could be your ticket to Super Bowl 56. Ooh. When you refer a friend on FanDuel Sportsbook, you'll be entered for a chance to win an all expenses paid trip to Super Bowl 56. Damn. If you happen to be in Pennsylvania, this is also in partnership with Valley Forge. Don't miss FanDuel's biggest refer a friend offer yet. All you have to do is share your exclusive referral link right from the Sportsbook app. Once your friend places any bet of $10 or more, you will both get $50 and will be entered into the Super Bowl sweepstakes. If you or a friend have been thinking about joining FanDuel, now is the perfect time to give it a shot. I dig FanDuel because it's a super easy to use app. You just pop it on your phone, sign in, Everything's just laid out for you. You don't have to think too hard about it. You don't have to manage anything. They keep track of everything for you. If you're new to FanDuel, you can sign up with promo code OFFICIAL and get your first bet risk-free for up to $1,000. Make every moment uh, make every moment count this NBA season with promo code OFFICIAL. You can see for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app and refer a friend for your chance to win a trip to Super Bowl 56 for two. And there's a little disclaimer here. You must be 21 and older and present in Arizona, Colorado, Connecticut, Iowa, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Virginia, or West Virginia. Referred players must wager $10 or more within 28 days after signing up. Bonus issued as site credit is non-withdrawable and expires after seven days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. No purchase necessary for the Super Bowl ticket promotion. Super Bowl promotion closes on 1-9-22. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text NEXT STEP to 53342 in Arizona. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg org slash chat <laughs> in Connecticut. You got it. 1-800-522-4700 in Colorado. 1-800-BETS-OFF in Iowa. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana. 1-800-GAMBLER in Michigan, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Illinois, and Virginia. And TN Redline 1-800-889-9789 in Tennessee. Or visit 1-8000-GAMBLER.net in West Virginia. That is the end of the ad. Holy whoa, shit. Whoa, 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 what do I call? You sounded like you were what hacking into the you, Pentagon at the end there. Yeah, you went fucking sicko, bro. You did. I channeled the Matrix. Whoa, too soon. Please, too soon. It was poor like people. Two minute, that was just two minutes of numbers. I may or may not be contractually obligated to say certain things. Anyway, the Matrix. That's fair. So I, oh, I watched it with heart. some buddies, and we, of course, <laughs> roasted the shit out of it. And man, that movie is just frustrating because I see the ideas. But none of them work. Not a single mm -hmm. thing they execute in that movie works no. well. Well, maybe the fifth one. They'll get it all figured out. Yeah, yeah that was the this was a practice run. This was a practice run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah if and they I, don't jerk themselves off to death. Yeah, there's two arguments Whatever, for this ahead, movie Andrew. that are being made in every camp. The first is like, 
Lana Wachowski made this as kind of a fuck you because so Warner Brothers was rumored to want to make the Matrix with or without them. They, okay. they explicitly stated, listen, the Matrix 4 is coming with or without the Wachowski brothers involvement. So a lot of people think Lana made this movie intentionally uh... bad to be like, all right, let's do you know a matrix on my terms and we'll throw in a bunch of references right, and kind no. of make fun of the audience with the meta jokes and all that then there's the Fuck other you. camp wait well, wait so that, that's like a situation where it's like you can't take my baby from me i'll drown him exactly it's, yeah, it's, you a, can't nobody kill it, I will. it's like a, yeah, it's a nobody oh, wins scenario it's that meme it, it, it's that meme i was just pretending to be retarded you guys like no you just made a so, shit movie so that's Own the it. first argument and there's evidence that supports that and then there's the other camp which is lana did want to hop back on it and it was the window to make a movie and lana thought that this really was a kind of you know clever in your face like oh meta commentary script and it was also a very personal movie because there's quotes of lana talking about like her family died when it started writing and like all these things that happened that really motivated them to start making a new matrix and they took the opportunity but the problem with both of those realities is neither of them make a good movie so, <laughs> all fair right. point. Yeah. Neither of it produces a good movie with passion and effort. The thing with the first Matrix, the thing that you guys talked about in the previous episode is it had a style, a green filter, a green tint, a way of yes. directing, a way of filming mm -hmm. shots. There is Which none is done to of death, that. But it's the Matrix style. Because because here's the thing. Well, first of all, the Matrix style wasn't a thing when the Matrix came out. Now it's overdone. But back then it was this big new thing. But this movie clearly has no vision has it no has identity. no idea it has no identity it exists so the matrix came out the original one because the wachowski sat down and said well why don't we take the influences we have from like anime and these old kind of cyberpunk things and turn them into an action movie about becoming the chosen one in a digital mm -hmm. world what if we take the philosophical concept if we live in a simulation and expound it into an entire like action paced mind fuck movie that's the idea of the first Matrix. You know what the idea of Matrix 4 is? Let's make a new Matrix. <laughs> well, 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 about what? I don't know. The Matrix. Because people like it. And it just makes a boring, forgettable piece of shit. I, I don't remember. It, I really hate it. Did the second it. and third have ideas behind them? Was it was it like always designed as a trilogy? They they do. So it wasn't designed as a trilogy, but they uh, at least have an idea. the The idea of episode two and three is let's deconstruct what it means to be the chosen one. God, so the first lame. Matrix, the first Matrix is Neo. You are the chosen one, and the reality is a simulation, and you can break free humanity of this fucking chain. But the second and third movies go, well, what does it mean to be the chosen one? What if this has already happened before? What if this is predetermined? What if it's not free will? And what then if the this fourth is all one. And then the fourth the one is just what matrix? <laughs> the fourth one is fuck yeah, you. Yeah. And, then the, and then the fourth one is, do you like the matrix? Let's do it again. And it sucks. It just sucks. <laughs> Remember this iconic scene? I know. Which they copy it shot again, for shot. Worse. The entire first two thirds like the of the movie Connie. is shot for shot from the first movie. Everything happens again. Jackson, you talked about Smith punching concrete. You're missing like 90% of it. Morpheus tackles Agent Smith to <laughs> save Neo. Neo has the conversation with Smith about billions of people running their lives without realizing it. Literally, their entire like sequences stolen from the first movie with nothing changed there's just, no point just to it's clarify like i'm no, missing 98% of it because i didn't watch it so god that's no, you know what changed though andrew is that there is now meta commentary because any one of the characters is always saying hey remember how this was way better in the first movie and I now know. it sucks yeah, I know. Sorry, and, and people try to give lana credit <laughs> for that and i think there's definitely a layer an element of, oh yeah, haha, ha, reference early Matrix, fuck you audience for wanting the same movie again, but that doesn't matter when you literally do the same movie again. Yeah, I just think, I, I'm just not interested in that kind of meta commentary anymore either. I, yeah, like, it when is they getting bring the dated. Fourth, it, it is, it's just getting done. Yeah. I don't know, I'm just, I'm just yeah, done. Yeah, stop like, you're breaking immersion. Like, now, why are you reminding but, me that I'm watching a stupid movie? What we we should say, change. Right? I was gonna say, do they bring always... back those uh, those twins with the white dreads from the second movie? No, I wish. <laughs> I no, wish those guys so were cool. cool. Those, those guys, those were, 
Let me, Ray, let me no, give you, you some context you, on this movie. The twins, they were fucking dope. Yeah, Ray, they were. let me they give you some back. context. Let All me give right. you some context on this movie while you and anyone who hasn't seen it shouldn't even bother. I don't think you guys mentioned this last time. The One of the opening scenes is Neo is in a coffee shop, and in this version of The Matrix, his memory has been wiped, and Trinity's memory has been wiped, and Trinity shows up at the main coffee shop, or the same coffee shop, and okay. one of Neo's co-workers goes, ah, uh, you see her? Total effing milf. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, that's the first nice, joke of the movie. Dude, nice. That's the first joke of the script. What did he mean by effing? Is to call Marianne old. Oh my lord. <laughs> oh god. Terrible movie. Then, but uh, what I was gonna say, what annoyed me is like the retconning where all the, the Big Bang Theory cast their spitballing ideas for the new Matrix game. You know, that scene where they're like, mm -hmm. you know, the Matrix was about trans politics and eco fascism and communist exploitation of it. It's like, why, what are, why are you making all this shit up? The, the fucking movie was about being stuck in a video game and it being unescapable unless you're the chosen one which plays like into the fantasies of every adolescent you're, boy you're kind it of was, paraphrasing it wasn't that fucking deep it the, was a good the exact line they say is it's about um the ideas of philosophy Cap meets action no 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 yeah. they, they they expressively mentioned the capitalist manifesto or something weird like that so. i do remember them they did. They, they, they did. do. They, was, they yeah, did. Like the larger guys, something like it's a commentary on modern capitalism and predatory capital or something like that. It may have just been capitalism. Yeah. But I, I remember in the brainstorming scene, one guy is like, we need to flip their WTF switch. And he brings up how, oh, hell yeah. how the original oh, yeah. Matrix was like, <laughs> <That's> not, <good. laughs> night, or what the fuck is his name? <laughs> Fucking fi brain philosophy. I can't talk. Brain <laughs> philosophy meets hardcore action was like one of the lines he says in the movie. I love how you nailed all of those fucking numbers before and you fuck up on brain philosophic. Fuck, He's I fucked it up. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, Jackson. Yeah, I'm really, I'm yeah really pretty cool. easy to do, isn't it? Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, we should change the topic if Ray hasn't seen the movie. I'd like for this man to have did his you, episode. Did, either, did any of you try the uh, the Matrix experience thing that was out on consoles? To like no, promote it the movie. Really cool though, it did look cool a little bit that I've seen. Apparently, like as a game, it's kind of whatever. But just seeing like what the engine well, can graphically, do. Graphically, kind of, it looks incredible, yeah, right? It's kind of surreal in a way. Yeah, that might be better than the movie, from what you've told me. <laughs> just that little experience. <laughs> oh, God. They used, the movie um, is so frustrating. They, they have the a scene engine in the movie. Oh, did they, they have a scene where they kick Neo's ass to get him his yeah. superpowers back, and he gets a force push and nothing else, and he's like, "I can't fly anymore," and they're like, "Why?" And he's like, "Because I can't fly anymore." I hate this movie. <laughs> so stupidly <laughs> literally he even does a little like impotent jump in the air and he's like yeah, this ain't happening yeah, and then for it's some not fucking work. reason trinity can fly now because she's also the chosen one but nobody is the chosen one also and then they have a ugh, god the fucking prophecy at, at says the end, there's like supposed to be a one scene i know huh what well, the the fucking whole prophecy yeah, they, and the design of the matrix is there is one who can bend all the rules rules and free humanity and then at the end both neo and trinity are the one it's like okay Cool. Oh, did me all that did out? We, did we say one? We meant two. Sorry about that. Yeah, the two. Yeah. Yeah. My bad, guys. <laughs> You're the two. Yeah. All of a sudden, she's super special, just like him. Not explain. They don't ever explain how Neo had powers in the real world. R like, remember, he developed the force and he was using it against those squid things in the real realm. Like, how? Why? How? How could? Like, at least try to explain why the super futuristic hyper giga AI being cannot just perma ban a bunch of griefers from its like simulation like why are they even sending in fucking zombies Slash ban all just pull the plug on them <laughs> ip ban no, none it of it is ex oh by the way ray if you like sit through the credits yeah at the end you get a little after credit scene of the big bang theory cast again just sitting in a fucking restaurant talking about stupid matrix games i feel like i feel it's like we've already from start to finish i feel like ray already knows the full movie now. yeah basically you guys uh, i don't need to watch scene. it you guys fill me in thank you you yeah. save me uh whatever yeah. two hours however long it is <laughs> so Jesus. ray let's let's focus it back on you this is your episode what's something you've checked out yes. recently you've got a strong yeah. opinion on oh uh well i guess since we last did a podcast, I've been really into the uh, Yakuza series. Yeah. I finally sat down and played oh. through all those. Fuck Great. yeah. Great Which games. one was your favorite? Uh, I think Zero is my favorite. Good taste. Great it was, fucking uh, taste. Well, I mean, it was the first uh, the first one I played because I played them in order, and it was uh, it was phenomenal, and I've played every single one that came out, uh, well, here in, in America anyway, 
Phenomenal so series. You, you played them in like chronological order, not release order. Yeah, yeah, I and, played them in, in yeah. chronological order. And uh, yeah, I got all the achievements and everything. It was, uh, it was a good time. Great time. They're just so goddamn good. That, they see, are. that's something with passion behind it. You can tell the team making that has a lot of fun making yeah. those fucking games. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and there's like so uh, fucking like insane. I love ten them. of them right now that you could play they're on. Fu- they're in a fucking game series that makes talking on the phone and eating fast food exciting. Mm-hmm. They're so good. I can't I, recommend them highly enough. The first time I played it, I hated it, and then I tried it again because I came up on Game Pass. And I'm like, ah, this is fucking free one. That I'll try it again, and I'm like, oh, I'm dumb. This is great. What what hooked <laughs> you? What what part hooked you? Uh, I think, well, when I first played Yakuza 0 on PlayStation, I didn't know, like, exactly how cutscene heavy it was in the beginning. So I was streaming at the time, and I'm like, ah, fuck, this sucks, I haven't really played. But, the second time around, I'm like, alright, I know I have to get over this hurdle of, like, the opening cutscene and shit, but once the game opens up in, like, chapter, I don't know, three, it's like, oh my god, this is great. All the story, like, the main story's pretty compelling, the side stuff is pretty stupid and funny, and the the gameplay is good, and the character, it's so good. I don't know why they front load their game so much. They do it in all of their games pretty much. Like they the do, first yeah. three chapters, which is like three, four hours probably. They, it's yeah, it's pretty heavy so handed. It's cutscene heavy. Yeah, but once, I, I once bet they it turns you, a lot of people off. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a hard thing to get past, especially if you don't know. But once you get past it, then the game opens up and you're like, oh, this is great. Yeah. This is phenomenal. I, I, usually, I usually hate hearing that like w- w- when someone recommends something to me and they're like, this is, this is like a great game or a great movie or a great book, but you've just got to get through the first half. And then, yeah. and then, then that's where it really picks off. I'm like, well, I don't... Yeah, you know, most of the time, like, I don't want to sit through five hours of shit yeah. to get to fun, but that's know, for Yakuza, funny, it's definitely tr- worth it. Isn't that like the meme with... Isn't that a meme One with like, anime people? Yeah, One yeah. Piece. Uh, yeah. That kind of stuff where they're like, oh, oh bro... Trust me, like you just have to watch 800 episodes and then it gets, it gets good. good. That's the funny <laughs> trick on Yakuza, though, because the side content is even better than the main content. Yeah. yeah. So, so That's you play the, the main game, is. and it's like, yeah, the the stories are fun, and they're like crime thrillers, and yeah, Japanese you know, there's some crime really drama. Good, yeah, and there's there's really good action set pieces in there, and those are really good. But then the game opens up, and not only do you get more of that, but you get all these fun side quests that fucking. All these I mean, silly some characters of the side quest stories are just so good. No, just take it. Take the world's most serious man, like Superman, as a regular guy, and throw him into the most baffling and kooky and wacky scenarios, and mm-hmm. just it's just so worth it. It's just so much fun. Yeah, it's, I, uh, I, I definitely recommend it. It's it's a blast. I even played Like a Dragon, and I'm a bit, I'm not a big uh, turn based RPG guy, but it was great. I loved mm-hmm. it. Most Have people played... say that's the best one. Okay, I have actually. a question for question for all of you is there like any movie or game you guys will not check out that you're like stubbornly biased against oh, for yeah, whatever reason yeah I-, I can take this uh the okay. justice league snyder cut what? Uh, really? that already. <laughs> how come yeah we-, we talked about that already it's just it doesn't interest me it's like four hours long uh it's just not worth it what if it's like me. super good and you would love meanwhile it. jackson's gonna watch that whole trilogy for the third time for star wars Oh, you bet. <laughs> In one sitting. Uh, I've never played Among Us, and I think I just have no interest in playing it at all. <gasps> oh, you, oh, yeah, yeah, that's fine. You know, we're yeah, yeah, playing yeah. all day today, Ray. Let's do it. <laughs> Among Us Marathon. You and me, 1v1 in Among Us. Yeah, I, I like missed the first wave, and then, like, everyone's been playing it non Well, was playing it nonstop, and then I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know, it doesn't do it for me. I, I played it once, and I, wait, wasn't it with you guys? We we played it once, I think, together or something, right? Yeah, I think so. Did we? Probably. You guys were like, no, Kaya, you, you're not supposed to talk during this part. Blah, blah, blah. You were like <laughs> trying to make it less fun, which is why I'm biased against that game That's too but, now. What? And just the other day, I wanted to play games with Jackson. And he was like, okay, we're playing Amogus. Are you going to come? And no. <laughs> yeah, you know what? No, something came up. <laughs> <laughs> it was, you actually uh, I mean, did you did outright <laughs> reject me which was nice <laughs> it was a great game for people to uh, collab and stuff though a lot of channels yeah, grew yeah, and yeah, a lot of people yeah. uh, are big now because of it but yeah I just completely missed the wave and now it's just like I don't really know anyone who's playing it religiously so, except the small it was, group of people it was a long wave though it was like a, it was. It was like a swell kind of reminded me of like Fortnite yeah. and I mean Fortnite's still played today but like Fortnite and like, like Ninja Fortnite yeah. that shit was like peak for a while did you intentionally miss it? Were you on your like wedding or something? No, or... with uh, I just for a while I didn't really do collab streams. I just kind of streamed by myself. That's since changed, but yeah, just the the gameplay loop didn't see 
didn't seem that interesting. Like if you played Among Us for like, I don't know, two hours, hour and a half, you've played the whole game. And it just yeah, loops. Uh, kind of, but I, I guess like, the, the whole thing is like different people and different yeah, reactions. Yeah, it depends and shit on like your that. Group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that, that's the other yeah. thing. It really depends on the group. I've I've watched streams of friends who were playing it, and all it takes is like one person, one bad apple to kind of spoil the whole yeah. session. Whether they're like screaming or take it too serious. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah, I guess I guess uh, Among Us. How do you spoil Among Us? Well, like how you did when we were playing, apparently (laughs) talking during the rounds. (laughs) No, someone just takes it like too seriously and shit. Yeah, that's the rules, Kaya. You don't talk during the round, otherwise. See, uh, see, I don't like playing with people who actually like take it seriously and care about winning or doing the right way. That's the entire point of the game. Kaya is the kind of guy to go to a murder (laughs) mystery and be given a role, and he goes, "It was me. I'm the killer. Isn't this fun?" (laughs) What do you understand about the social deduction game needing that element? Well, I I don't know. You might be great with Among Us because you could just accuse anyone blindly, and and then you could just start shit. (laughs) <laughs> like, oh yeah, it was Jackson. No, I saw him. No, you didn't. Yeah, I did. I saw you. <laughs> That's just, what you I was just trying to do, shit. I think. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the point. No. I know I this mean, uh, yeah, could be. I, I know you. this is a little bit older at this point, but you guys talk about when that Twitch leak happened like a couple of months ago and how that was oh, the money thing? pretty yeah. fucking wild. I uh, well, I went to bed. It, 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 it yeah. like leaked late at night, and I went to bed, and my wife couldn't sleep that night, so she was reading about it, and then uh, <laughs> she's telling me all about it. When I woke up, and people were were tweeting me. I'm like, oh, "What the fuck did I do?" And I'm like, "Oh, this is this is weird." It was kind of uh, it was an interesting couple of days. I know a lot of people got really upset about it, and I guess rightfully so. But it was one of those things oh, for me God. where I'm just like, "Well, it's out there. There's nothing I can do." Uh, I guess I'm just gonna roll with it and just kind of make fun of it. And why were you up? Ups- why do you think it's rightful for people to be upset about it? Because I, people get really protective about how much they make, and maybe they oh, feel right. like uh, I thought you they, the they don't want people knowing right. how well, much they make that. or how it's, like yeah, yeah, I guess little yeah. they make of some people that care about that and shit like that, which I understand, but. You know, it's one of those things where no, I understood from like a privacy. Yeah, exactly. Standpoint, it's like, kind of like a breach of privacy. That, that thing went oh, away is. overnight. Nobody cares anymore, and yeah. it's like you mm-hmm. have to imagine that's that this was, is that... the this is Amazon, right? This is Amazon, an Amazon company that is like the, the biggest company on earth, leaking a bunch of employee data, basically like payments uh, information and shit. That it wasn't just the amount of money they make. Oh yeah, it's true. I there know, was that's more what to everybody it. focused on, but there was more. That was the weird like, thing. How, how did this happen? People were, were how can you let this hyper focus on how much like streamers are making and how it was like outrageous and stuff like that, which, you know, fair. But there was like this big company just leaked out all this information, like tons and tons of information. And everyone's upset how much, you know, fucking Amaranth makes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it got it, like it got overshadowed by all the memes and jokes about income. Yeah. Is, I mean, I just, you know, I memed it. I was t- I told my audience, I'm like, listen, this is going to blow over in like a week and people are going to move on to something else. I mean, it's kind of shitty that this happened but uh you know it is what it is that's always the case speaking of amaranth vice released recently released a documentary on her she makes 1.5 million a month from OnlyFans and twitch OnlyFans being her biggest source not surprised yeah yeah hey she's got it unlocked good for her you know yeah yeah I mean, it's, yeah. There's, wait, there's no... you mean woman with big boob and butt can make money from men who like big boob and butt? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Well, it's just she plays. It's the, it's the amount of money though. It like is one point five million. That is a lot. Is yeah, a lot. that's more than I thought. True. But, I mean, but, still... but keep in mind, she's still super famous. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. And, and it was just weird. Like uh, a lot of the hates I, I got because. Uh, like a lot of those streamers, some of them are, are like, oh, I'm a communist, rich people bad. And then you realize, oh, he's a fucking, he's like Jeff Bezos's buddy almost. But how can you be surprised that the women make a lot of fucking money on OnlyFans? You're like, oh, this woman that I pay $100 a month has a lot of money. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel I like Am- Amareth is like <laughs> yeah. the, the leader of, she, she'll set these metas, <laughs> with, whether it be like the hot tub meta yeah. or whatever, and then people will just follow yeah. what she does, and she just does I, it so well and makes all this she's money. She's got a good nose for it. The one yeah. I will she does. never get, the one I will never get is when people are shocked and outraged that they make a lot of money in general. It's like, oh my god, the person I pay $20 a month to yeah. that has yeah. literally <laughs> tens of thousands of other people oh. doing that makes a lot of money. What are the things I got paying them. That are the it was uh, one of the things too when those leaks happened. I don't know about uh, you guys, but for me, my sub count. I have my sub count 
like on my stream on just so screen, people can yeah. go like see it go up and down in real time because i use it it's as easy like to figure it, out yeah i'm like just do some basic math you could get a rough estimate um yep. but people just don't want to do the time to you know do your sub times whatever um people are but, surprised that you're not living paycheck to paycheck yeah <laughs> even though the number's right there on the fucking screen it's all back you to the argument of relatability this, yeah yeah, go ahead, Kaya. Mm, yeah, but, but I also blame like the kind of YouTubers uh, to start. I think on YouTube, kind of with the content creators who would plug their Patreons, and every single time they did, they would make it sound like it was a life or death thing. Like, oh, guys, I need to pay rent, so please go over to my Patreon oh, for like fluctuating ad rates and shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah, right. For the yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a bit different. The that was, it's a bit uh, different. It's it was like, different it, back then, it, though. It is different, but what I'm saying is, I think people got the impression that's like all creators now, that they all do the sleazy yeah. shit that only a few of them really did. So now everybody, whenever you find out that your favorite streamer makes millions of dollars, they're like, "I thought you were one of the commoners. You were a peasant like me, and you were living paycheck to paycheck. Isn't that what you told me?" But no, it's not really. I mean, he's been flexing his sub count in your face for years. Yeah. You were just not paying attention. Well, what if <laughs> what if I started an OnlyFans where I just eat Magic Spoon every day? You should do it. Ooh, that'd be good. Signed, I embrace yeah. it. Yeah, because I'll just let's drop the pretense. Magic Spoon is fucking delicious. Charlie, tell them about Magic Spoon in bed. Well, you said that right when I took a drink of water. I like Magic Spoon a lot. <laughs> Spit that shit out. I, the one that I like the best is Fruity. I think Fruity is definitely their strongest one. None of them are bad. I just feel like Fruity is going to be like their best one. So if there's one that you want to like, if you want to try Magic Spoon, I'd recommend Fruity. It tastes like Fruit Loops, but it's a lot healthier. Ooh. It's a, a very keto friendly cereal. You get a lot of good macros in there. So it's also good for anyone that takes like weightlifting or just general fitness seriously. It's just a really good snack. Andrew, you could probably go on a bit more about like, oh, the yeah. details. but Of course. I just, I, well, I've heard of the I, I just like bringing up Magic Spoon. I just like bringing up Magic Spoon with Charlie, and I do it like every time we do this ad read because we both got some around the same time, and we, we just organically, I went to his house one day, and he was like, did you try Magic Spoon yet? And I was like, yeah, it's fucking great. He was like, yeah, it's fucking great because we both think Magic <laughs> Spoon is fucking great. We are, All four of us think Magic Spoon is great. Ray, I don't know if you tried Magic Spoon, but I know for a fact... You would think you know it's what? great. I'm gonna try it right now. You sold me. It's delicious. Zero check, grams of check sugar. Check under your chair right now, Ray. Yeah. Oh check my God. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, how'd you get this to Texas so fast? No wonder Ray's chair was 10 feet off the ground. It was loaded yeah. with magic spoon. Oh, zero grams of sugar, 14 <laughs> grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving, and also 140 calories. Tastes great, keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, low-carb. They're also bringing back two limited-time flavors permanently, cookies and cream and maple waffle. I've oh. had both of those. They are both very nice. They've mm. got tons of different flavors, and checking their website right now, they have a gingerbread one that's Ooh. currently going out, so maybe try that Christmas while it's eat. still available even though it's not christmas they maybe they're slacking a little bit doesn't matter take advantage of that delicious flavor click the link below to get magic spoon today you can build your very own variety box or use code official for you audio listeners out there to get five dollars off choose from cocoa fruity frosted peanut butter cookies and cream and maple waffle flavors don't worry, whatever state you're in, you can get any of them. Plus, <laughs> other awesome flavors include blueberry and cinnamon. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. If you don't like it for any reason, they will refund you, no questions asked. No, you don't have to say untrue things like, oh, I don't like how it tasted, or oh, the box is stupid. No, you're lying to yourself. You just have bad taste because Magic Spoon is incredibly good and good for you. Click the link below and I use like code official of ad for five dollars off or go to magicspoon.com slash official to save five dollars on your order today. Magic Spoon is also now shipping to Canada. Ooh, so if you happen to be yeah. in America's slightly more friendly cousin, check them out as well. They also have cereal there. It's good to know. They do, but Magic Spoon is there and it's better than anything Canada could ever produce. Magicspoon.com slash official for five dollars off all of us eat it it's really fucking good i don't know how else to tell you about it was it nice to do that ad read and not have to read 50 digits 
<laughs> I like the challenge. Yeah, I can don't you know. read the nutritional info in the back? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah all in order. <laughs> I got hype up by it. I don't know. That ad read woke me up. I oh. liked it. Okay, uh, hang on. I have a story actually because when you said zero sugar, it reminded me. Um, so Ray, yes, in our Discord server, we have a moderator. Okay. His name is Brady. All right, Brady has <laughs> recently accused me of uh, committing a felony for drugging him. Oh, now. <laughs> This seems fun. So Brady this did sounds not like have Kaya, a fun yeah. Christmas. <laughs> he didn't what? <laughs> so what? Uh, I uh, so me and my buddies we sent him sugar-free gummy bears. Now I didn't know this, but sugar-free gummy bears are apparently like super toxic. Yeah, and they're, like, they're actual know? poison. Oh. Yeah, they're poison. I they didn't are. know. I didn't wow. know they are. Wait, you guys I don't know this? Sell them. No. Ray, did you know this? So no, I, this I didn't was know a big this. Thing. This sounds like a bit. Yeah, the the artificial sugar in those <laughs> no, gummy bears is like a diuretic. It makes you shit your pants. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. So well, what happens, what Ray? Is it? we? I, I do a secret Santa with my buddies and such, and so we sent Brady this pack of gummy bears. He opens it. He thinks it's a secret Santa's gift. Okay. And by the way, on the box of gummies, it has a gigantic warning label which I'm going to read now. It says, quote, consumption of sugar-free products can produce a mild laxative effect. Uh. Also, in some cases, it can affect blood sugar as well. We recommend starting with a small serving size. Now, the serving size, it says uh, under the nutrition facts, is 10 gummy bears. <laughs> he ate the whole bag. Oh, oh no. Oh, God. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you killed a man. Yeah, he's okay. dead. Brady's still <laughs> alive, is he? To- <laughs> For now, can he, he is. Can he read? He what, was what? up all Christmas shitting himself. <laughs> oh, he was he was super drunk too. Yeah, thank you for reminding me, Chad. And um, yeah, the next day he um was angry and he accused me of lacing his gummy bears with drugs. Oh, well, you didn't lace because they're he just didn't normally laced. That sugar-free. <laughs> yeah, Jesus, that's just no, naturally, yeah. I never that's knew that. that. Naturally, uh, yeah, neither. Look. What the fuck? Why do they sell them then? <laughs> do they sell them as a laxative? <laughs> as, as a joke, I guess. As a bit. <laughs> Jesus. Oh yeah, I mean, if you go to the Amazon review section for any of these sugar-free gummy bears or sugar-free like candy gummies it's all people going yeah had the desired effect on my buddy i i pranked <laughs> what the fuck so what 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 is it about uh sugar-free gummy bears that makes them turn into a laxative if they're just if sugar is like the no sugar idea. alcohol they use oh so there's like a replacement sugar for the alcohol? sugar that yeah. It's bad. Dude. Yikes, dude. It's a sugar... I just looked it up. Sugar, alcohol, and it's called, like, Matatol. Do they have less calories? Is that the point? Yeah. Less calories. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's like you feel sugar-free Coke. a little better about eating gummy bears, I guess. Well, in theory. <laughs> yeah, instead. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, and then you pay your price. <laughs> yeah. You shit your pants. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's like, you want to lose weight, right? Just eat these gummy bears. You'll shit it all out. I mean, diet. Might, oh yeah, we told Brady he should uh, weigh himself after his little <laughs> yeah. esca- poop scapade. Yeah, once you get out of the hospital, it was amazing. I, I, I wo- he was genuinely mad too. Like I woke up to all these messages. You drugged me. You think it's funny to drug me? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, he ate this whole bag without ever looking at the fucking warning label slapped on top of oh, it. To be fair, he was, he was drunk. Just, yeah, he was drunk, and they were also just gummy bears. I would have yeah. probably not suspected a thing either. I don't, I don't completely well, here's blame him. an actual, him. like, what, what happened, uh, he was like, okay, I said, why did you eat all of them, buddy? And he said, well, you guys kept telling me to. And I said, well, didn't that make you suspicious? <laughs> he said, I thought you were just trying to make me fat. <laughs> <laughs> the complete opposite, actually. I mean, I'm glad that he thought you were trying to torture him in one way and not the other. Yeah. <laughs> this is a, a the right idea, just wrong place. <laughs> How could he be so wrong? So there's a prank idea for everybody. Sugar-free gummies. A lot of people don't seem to know. Yeah, I'll get that for my parents for next Christmas, I guess. Is that also under my chair? Should I check for gummy bears? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question uh, going back to yeah. streaming for a second for, uh, for Charlie. Last time I was here hey, three years ago, we talked about streaming just in general and how, you know, you were kind of like kind of interested in it or, you know, so, so if you're going to stream on Twitch or YouTube and now you're easily one of the biggest Twitch channels 
you know, on the platform. Like how, how did that happen? How, how do you feel about that? Like what changed? Yeah, Ray's going to start uh, asking for his royalties in a moment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just got, I think a lot of it just spoils down to luck, man. I, I say this. For no, I mean, everything. no, for sure. I mean, you already had, you already established on YouTube. You had millions of, uh, you know, subscribers and shit, but like what, what, what made you stream on Twitch more, I guess. And what made you like, I guess, embrace the, the culture. I, mean, I don't know if that's the right wording for it, but. I switched from YouTube to Twitch in 2018. That was when YouTube announced that anyone in your chat that was being edgy could get you in trouble. And that was like a super scary announcement. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's that week. so dumb. What the fuck? Wait, is, yeah, is it the like, same thing true for Twitch, though? No, you don't get in trouble for your chat. Yeah, but on no. YouTube, you would get in trouble. Like if your chat. Like, you, 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 we, we even talked about it on the podcast. You remember there was a, that that stream they were doing for charity and someone did a super yeah. chat that yeah. had an edgy message and they just took like all the money away from it right like you would get punished if I your chat oh, that sucks. Oh. Was behaving. Uh, what was that yeah i vaguely i don't remember. remember it now but it was something like that yeah i think i know yeah so then i just switched to twitch from that no, wait, that wasn't even an edgy message in the chat, wasn't it? Because the streamers themselves were like edgy people and then YouTube was like, no, we're not going to accept their um, contribution no, to it. Yeah, was... Somebody put it in the chat, St. Jude's Hospital. Uh, I, if I remember correctly, it was the chat because the YouTube made an announcement saying that you're responsible for your chat and that if like someone you know makes a super chat donation with like bad words in it or something like that youtube has the right to take that away and like, yeah i'm gonna issue a strike i'm gonna assume that charlie's correct here due to the fact that this is what like convinced him to swap over to twitch wow. as opposed to youtube it, it's been a few it's i mean it's been, yeah, it's been fucking though. almost four years mm -hmm. now but I, it was something like that it was something where, like, it was out of the streamer's hands and YouTube, like, withheld the right to just that punish sucks. you if someone that you don't even know was, like, being edgy. How do you how do you feel about the YouTube uh, versus Twitch experience or debate, uh, Ray? Do you think you'll ever move over to YouTube? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I've been on Twitch for eight years, so I'm pretty, so like, loyalty. cemented there, yeah, and I... I don't do like my YouTube channel is mainly just a Twitch archive. Like I don't do yeah. like traditional YouTube videos and stuff like that. Like I'll do highlights, but most of it's just uh, just my Twitch archived content. And I mean, you know, even when everything was going on with like Mixer and rest in peace and like <laughs> all that shit. Um, <laughs> yeah, bring up that I name. I forgot here. about Mixer. Yeah, uh, I'm just like you know I'm already established on Twitch. I do you know I do well enough on Twitch. I I don't feel like I need to move or anything like that i mean i guess if youtube offered a stupid astronomical amount of money where it'd be dumb to say no i'd switch but i'm already like so ingrained on twitch and i'm happy enough there right well yeah that's what ninja did right and then just switched to mixer i yeah. think and mm -hmm. then mixer went belly up and he had to do the walk of shame back to twitch well, i mean walk of shame he still <laughs> made money he still made like tens of billions of dollars yeah, and yeah now, that's true he did and now he's back on yeah. twitch kind of just doing whatever the hell he wants yeah, he made money for like a vacation. The yeah, basically. the rest of his life. Same with Shroud, I think. There's another one. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I just kind of stay in my own corner of Twitch. You know, I don't really partake in any drama or like any LSF stuff. I just kind of hang out and, and play games and kind of a normie streamer in that regard, I you've guess. Got, you've, you've got a very dedicated audience. I so. do. I'm very lucky. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm very lucky that I have that... a good amount of people that'll watch fucking anything. That kind of was going to lead to a question I had for you, Ray. Do you think you've kind of, you're in a comfortable place, you got everything figured out? Because you've been doing the same stuff for a very long time, and you seem to be always enjoying it, and just, yeah, you know, yeah. cruising I, I, along. I, man. I, I, I mean, I guess I got it figured out as much as I can. You know, I'm, I'm always learning and trying to see what other streamers are, are doing. But for the most part, yeah, I have, like, I have my own little niche. I have my fan base of, you know, however many people show up, 1,500 or whatever, uh, who will watch anything and just hang out and very generous people and this past month was my best month ever on twitch uh Damn, so dude. i just nice. you know and just kind of do my own thing and just try to keep my hands clean of any of the you know shit that's going on just try to stay away from all of that which has been which has been super helpful mm -hmm. mm. But cool I'm, yeah I'm, I'm very lucky very lucky can't complain yeah, no, that's and awesome. you have one of the highest gamer scores in the world. I do. Oh, yeah. I do. Did Jack never tell you he, re he reached oh, really? out to me? 
to beat no, you. No, don't tell Wait him a minute. that, please. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Hang on a minute. Whoa. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. Whatever happened to the bet? Yeah, whatever Charlie happened to the bet? Jackson. Charlie gave Jackson, up. he cowered. He started to cower. I did not. I was. I was. Compl- I took a break because I was so far ahead of you, and then I just never heard from you again <laughs> about it. So I you figured it was over. So you were like. The only reason you were ever ahead is because you just did those like twenty minutes. Yeah, and it still counts. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's it's guess who gave him that list? Wins the race, Jackson. It's you're, counts. You're like the hair and the tail. Jackson yeah, DM'd me were randomly ahead in the race, and then you took a nap. Let me see if I could find uh, when it was. Oh, but, don't. but he DM'd me. He's like, "Hey, I'm in this competition with with uh, Charlie, and I can't beat him <laughs> because he's streaming." Uh, you know, all these hours of a day playing all these oh games. Oh my god! I guess gonna see if I could find it. He's like, "Can, can you help me?" I'm like, "You've come to the right place. <laughs> Please, Ray, help. You've come, help. You've come so to the Australian right degenerate." Help. So yeah, the reason he played all these shitty games is because I gave him a list of like super so, dumb baby games. Well, no, I, I did. So I did play so right you now. back. It all makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Deadline. Deadline. This is it. Oh, who, I'm not doing who's it. the winner? Me. I. Who's I the, no, think you, you don't have to do it anymore. Who's the winner? Okay, me. Right now. Me. Jackson. No, it's only, me. Jackson quite literally only did <laughs> the games on that list. I fucking 100%ed Bayonetta. Yeah, Ooh, that's Elder more Scrolls impressive, Oblivion. but that's not what the competition was. The competition was pure gamer score <laughs> increase, and I beat you, you son of a bitch. You don't get to change the rules. <laughs> I don't think you beat me either, because I, I also did. did that list. I got like 15,000. You got like eight. I got, I, no, I got a lot more. Than, I went well over 10. I, I did that whole list. Like the first one, no, that first well, list. I did way more than you anyway. This is my kind of conversation because I, I live for this shit. <laughs> yeah, how yeah, much gamer score do you make a, a week? Uh, it, Xbox tracks it monthly and I probably average around over 20,000 a month. So about 5,000 yeah. a week, yeah. But he does, he does real games. So I do why. a mixture yeah, he, of uh, real games and, does, and baby games. Yeah. He, really he, bad he, games. That's, that's, what it, that's what being an achievement hunter is all about. Charlie, it's doing those like shitty games. If you really well. want to get into it, like the degenerate levels that I have been for the past, I don't know, fifteen years, you play a lot of not fun shit. Yeah, uh, I'm trying I'm to sure get better about agree, it. Though. I'm sure you agree, Ray, that in a competition between two gentlemanly men, <laughs> uh, there's, there's no limits on the shittery that you. <laughs> no, I guess you if you're play. doing pure gamer score, you would really want to play like trash. But exactly. Charlie did play real games. No, and not exactly. just like me. Thank you. <laughs> I was oh under the impression when we did this, we'd be playing real games. But the second there the, was we never... did the competition, <laughs> Jackson immediately went to thirty-minute games that he could hundred percent. There was never any impression. It's 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 quality over quantity here. It seems. It, it, it but was. There yeah. was never... Charlie's there points was... are worth more. Yeah. No. I... <laughs> what? <laughs> They're not, worth more, are. they're not worth more in the sense of the competition. Yes, I agree. I that fucking 100%ed Bayonetta from scratch. <laughs> they're, like, they're sweeter okay, points. What? But it didn't win him the competition. Although, so to be fair, it sounds like Jackson worked smarter and Charlie worked harder. Exactly. Yeah, it depends exactly. on how you really want to... I guess you'll have to do it again, but be more specific. So easy games to Boy, If we really wanted a Charlie good competition, won? we should have just set up like a parameter of acceptable games and unacceptable games. Yeah. Plus, all right. Yeah. To be fair, I don't stream. I don't have the audience that Charlie does, and he was looking into like boosting games with his audience. That does help. It's an advantage that I don't have. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you I was just saying we can play these old games together. You can't boost the bayonet. It's a single player game. <laughs> well, no, but I heard him talking about. Uh, uh, it on stream he was he was like getting help from the I actually yeah was... i saw i was watching charlie's stream i was well, lurking and, and, for help. and he was playing a uh, skate three i'm like why is charlie playing yeah. skate three i'm like hell yeah i'm gonna lurk this and then he was like yeah, looking for wait, achievements that's... i'm like oh hell yeah this is my kind of stream <laughs> that's what he was trying to but boost jackson, you were sure. reaching out jackson you were reaching out to ray you were pulling no, exactly. screens behind no, the no, no, scenes no, 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 to no. get a I only did that once Ch- I saw Charlie's snaky attitude trying to utilize the audience. It, it wasn't boosting achievements. No one played the game, so I said we should all hop on these old games and play That's together. I wasn't boosting. boosting them. You had an unfair advantage. What, what am I going to do when I want to play Skate 3 and get those achievements? Am I going to make a forum post and get zero traction? <laughs> Just don't play that game, then. But that's an unfair or advantage. play with us. That's an unfair advantage. Or you advantage. can play with us. Oh, yeah, like I'm going to play with my main competition so you can sabotage me further. Also, another game that I 100%ed was Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl. You know how many fucking games I had to oh play online? Oh, my God. Online I just did that recently. That yeah, game. you need to play a lot of games online. I thought you liked the game, God. though. 
I do, but it was so, but the netcode is dog shit, so I had to play a million laggy fucking games on the Xbox. You did that for a competition that just faded into nothing. <laughs> I know. We never talked about it, took, it again. <laughs> I'm looking at it right now. It took me 12 hours and 16 minutes just to get that one last fucking achievement. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's rough. Oh, my God. <laughs> you fucking idiot. Well, okay, so again, you guys are being very furtive about this. But who has the higher gamer score? Uh, right? Me. I don't know. My, uh, my oh, you, yeah, you've got the okay. most gamer well, score. Yeah, but yeah. that wasn't what the competition yeah, was. It was um, like the most gained. So oh, there is there okay. is kind of so a way to if for, if for whatever reason you want to do this again because you guys seem at each other's throats. Uh, there is a website <laughs> uh, called True Achievements. <laughs> yeah, yeah, where yeah, uh, they give so each game has like their value, you know, ten, fifteen, whatever. What True Achievement does is through a an algorithm and by how many people play it unlock the achievements they'll give achievements their own value so in this instance uh so charlie completing bayonetta would be actually worth like you know 2500 points i cannot believe you right i reached out to you and now you're helping him <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying I, to make I, I fair, see this right? disgusting ponzi <laughs> yeah. scheme in action jackson yeah. goes hey ray if you tell me all the secrets to these points i'll let you back on the podcast and they shook a back alley <laughs> yeah. handshake i was wondering why and... i got my invite yeah oh <laughs> so yeah bayonetta would be worth like 2500 or 3000 we'll say true achievement points and then some of the, sh the shit i gave jackson is worth like a thousand and like ten <laughs> <laughs> what are you yeah. talking about mushroom quest is clearly <laughs> so like, so yeah. much cool. mushroom I, quest that, yeah, yo, Charlie, you play mushroom quest game. <laughs> i did I, I did i played that whole fucking list that he did mushroom quest oh. was one of the most insufferably bad what? puzzles so yeah. ever bad. played They're mushroom quest was one of the best ones i will say some of the, the best only so my favorite streams i do is when i play a bunch of bullshit games for achievements on stream because it's, it's honestly fun you it's could just weirdly fun. hang out and listen to some music and play some you know bad to mediocre games sometimes we'll get a yeah. gem in there and just hang out it's a nice chill stream it's just interesting the, seeing the bad games oh, to be the, honest yeah but th there was nothing chill about this ray dude these no guys i know have these guys are, this is great they i love, really I love shit like measure this. gamer dick listen yeah. i'm really into achievements <laughs> Can and stuff anybody so. remember what the stakes were there were no, no. stakes we but, were talking about uh, tattoos uh, but i uh, don't yeah, the only game on that list that was almost interesting was Evan's Remains, but since we just had to blast through it, I didn't get any of the yeah, story because in, order to, because in order to do it, you had to change the language yeah, to Spanish. Spanish. Oh, then, you do? Yep. <laughs> I remember that game. And what? then, yeah, there's a mechanic in the game where if you just press start, you can skip yeah. every puzzle. Yep, so you just yep, go yep. cutscene to cutscene and skip the all the dialogue. The, game, yep. the, game, the puzzle seemed shit. I wasn't really interested in the puzzle, but the story seemed slightly interesting. And yeah, no, the story I... seemed really yeah, good. Yeah, there's some cool actually. hidden gems in there. How did you, what? How did you keep up with the story if it was all Spanish? No, we didn't. That's what we're saying. Yeah, no, but like it, it's there was a lot of effort oh. put into it. Yeah, yeah, like they actually tried properly. Oh, okay. Did you? Yeah. Did you play that really fucking creepy visual novel novel one on the list called Strawberry Vinegar? I didn't get to that one. No. Oh, see, well, I've got that one on me, and that's worth a lot of true <laughs> achievement. It is. Uh, oh, okay. It is worth a thousand and thirteen. So thirteen more points for just playing it. That's how it, it takes fifteen <laughs> yeah. minutes to finish. Oh, it was the worst worst fifteen minutes of my. I don't know if you've played it. Ray, but oh God, yeah I'm, I'm i'm familiar well if you ever do it again and need a ref or a judge i will gladly i'll gladly yeah, take thank the you yes. we should do no. real fucking games this time no more bad games hmm. i in fact let's Why? let's create a new account each and play through mushroom quest oh again. my god Jesus. Now, you know there's a sequel to that fucking thing too it made me sick to my stomach I'm sure it is a lot of these games get sequels uh, well, Jackson, that are just like fake games as, as you agreed to do when we came up with the spets you now have to commit seppuku in front of all of us oh, oh, I nice. didn't lose <laughs> Wait, you did lose we don't even know yet I but won. I'm sure I did I won fair and square. No, I don't know. I don't even know how we can find out now. We said too long. what we. Yeah, oh, okay. Well, no, I don't because <laughs> our achievements have changed since then. Our scores. Yeah. I also accidentally started getting achievements on my other account as well. So I, sometimes <laughs> I would switch my accounts. So I have different, you I have see more achievements how he's teabagging you, Jackson? I just got to sit there and take this as he's talking about, oh, yeah, you Wait, know, I, I give I beat so you many on two accounts. I accidentally dude. get them. Yeah. So <laughs> I've had I've had my true achievements profile for a, a while connected to my Xbox account. Yeah. yeah. And I just looked at it. And this goes back to what I was talking about with how I couldn't find anyone to boost with. You can set a little motto 
on the True Achievements profile, and my motto has permanently, apparently been, can't find anyone in Garden Warfare, sad face. So, <laughs> apparently, I did try to boost that at some point, but I couldn't find anyone, so I put out a desperate cry for help as my motto. That must have been a while ago. I love it. Yeah. That's sad. We don't all have 15,000 people watching us at any given time to help boost us. Are you shaming Charlie for being successful? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good boy. It was a good competition, Jackson, but I had to keep my title as the best achievement. What are you on talking about? On the <laughs> internet. <laughs> what? You didn't even I like hear resentments. He didn't. Right. He hated achievements. I had to convince him that achievements I mean, were cool. Achievements are turbo niche, so I get it. And sometimes yeah. they make you do really annoying shit, like a lot of repetition. But but the the so, satisfaction uh, uh, when hang it on, pops, as an outsider, though. as like somebody who doesn't understand any of this, Ray, do you have the biggest gamer dick? Do you have more than uh, Charlie yeah, Jackson? Got a massive. I, uh, oh, yeah, I yeah. think I broke the top oh, okay. forty worldwide recently. I'm almost at two million. Nice. Fuck God yeah. Damn. yeah. So what do you, what do you think kind of people? Million. What kind of people do you think dominate the top 10? I mean, you'd think they'd be streamers too, or something to that uh, degree. Stallion, I don't know. I, is I Stallion still... I, I really don't know. People who just mm. non-stop all day, every day, where that's Psychopaths. like their whole, their whole job. I can't imagine they have anything else going on. Like, maybe they have a family. Yeah, you, I don't you, know. Dedicate, you dedicate an insane amount of I time. I dedicate a lot, so. yeah, but even I can't keep up. But yeah, I'm, I'm coming What's up on your, 2 million. What's uh, your true achievements? What's your profile here, Ray? My true achievements is... Over three million, <laughs> three million twenty-five thousand five hundred seventy. Yeah, what's what's me, it called? What's the? Oh, it's just, a, peek at the... it's just Ray Lamau. I'll, I'll write space. it out in the uh, Jackson. I'll uh, bo 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 I'll give it to you, and then you can post it wherever. Give me one second. Yeah, so you've got two million gamer score, and me and Charlie have about what a hundred thousand. Yeah, I but I've been I've been doing this K. pretty actively for like sixteen years at this point. I was one of the first Jesus. people to hit 100k gamer score back in the day. Were you? That's pretty cool, actually. I was, yeah. That is actually pretty cool. Did you, uh, I will, uh, like I will ask, did you have, uh, did you have any fun, Charlie, going for these achievements? I loved <laughs> it. When, when I was a kid, well, I guess I wasn't even really a kid, because I was like 14, 15. I did it all the way up until I was like 16, so I did it from 06 to a, probably about 2011. Yeah, yeah. I, I loved it and I never really did any of the meme games either like I actually never did the avatar one from back oh, then oh yeah, yeah yeah really just hunted in games I liked that's yeah well back then there was a lot more uh, there weren't, weren't as many I guess bullshit yeah. baby games and whatnot but no it's cool I'm glad <laughs> wait you're not at two million games I gotta take that Jackson <laughs> what he does it too Ray plays the baby games too I'm, I do uh, I do <laughs> right, I, I really gotta take a pistol bottom right, right go back. crazy yeah, wait, you're not a you're not at two million, Ray. You lied to me. I'm almost at, at, I'm almost at two million, almost at two million. How Sorry long if I said do it. you think it's gonna take to get that last hundred thousand? Uh pr probably first half of next year, or this year rather. I don't know, maybe like April oh, or May, okay. depending on how active I am about it. But I'm, I'm that's like ten what no, that's a hundred game completions, yeah. Are you challenging him? Yeah, I'll do it before you I'll get two million <laughs> before you, Ray. I'm gonna beat mushroom <laughs> quest before you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Did yeah, Charlie say there was a Mushroom the Quest sequel? Is... There, there sure is. Oh, you've already completed it, I uh, Yeah, I sure have. Oh, damn. I was going to challenge you to a friendly race. It's just oh, one of the, it's just a fun, just a fun hobby, you know? Just like my main gaming hobby. Do you ever see yourself getting tired of the achievement life? I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've been doing it for so long that it's weird playing game. Like, if I play a game on, like, the Switch... You know, it's weird that there's not, like, any kind of achievements or trophies or anything like that. I'm just, like, assume, I'm so used to it. I assume you have, like, a guide open constantly. With uh, for, for most things, yeah. So most Some things are straightforward. Or for, like, yeah. newer games. For, so, for, like, Halo Infinite, like, when the first when I first played it, I didn't have anything open. I just kind of experienced it. But on subsequent playthroughs, I'll, like, pull up information and guides that's, and shit. That's what my question was going to be. Like, I, fi I would find that if you go into a game with the expectation that... or or yeah, no, the expectation that you're going to be hunting achievements. I feel like you can't experience the game, uh, in, yeah, I, in a fun way, I guess, because you're always going for those achievements. Yeah, you'll, I think it might ruin your game, like yeah. your first playthrough of the game, or just your experience of the game. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The only thing I would maybe look out for is uh, if there's any achievements that are missable. 
that you have to play through yeah. the whole fucking game if you miss one See, that's thing. What, that's what I'd be stressed about is like, yeah. did I miss an achievement? So then you've got to look up the guide beforehand to know that. Yeah, but for like Halo, I went in completely blind, no guides or anything. I'm just like, I just want to experience this. Yeah, nice. Nice, nice, nice. The, this sounds like OCD. Also, I feel like a little bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Guys like you, Ray. I'm sure there's something wrong with me. Yeah, like Activision or <laughs> whatever. Like all these companies, they should come to you. Like you've played all these fucking games obsessively. Yeah. Please tell us how to make a good game. Uh, I don't think just because someone plays a game or puts a lot of hours into a game. Yeah, I don't know how much I can I can help. I can maybe give yeah. you like a decent achievement idea or two, but oh, everything else. No, you. Right, so Ray, please. what, just make what drives easy. you to keep this going? Is it is it just you're just so used to it and you just want to not end uh, it, or this... do you still have that? No, I, I still know. like doing it. The the serotonin of seeing the gamer score number go up and the achievement pop. That's literally it. <laughs> nice. It makes the it achievement all, pop is so yeah. satisfying. All these years keep later, all these years later, it still makes me happy. Getting the rare achievement or uh... have you ever have you ever canceled the dates with your wife? No, so you could get an no. Achievement. Even when we were, even when we were dating, no, she always got priority. Do you but see when, that stuff in oh, real life? Like you good. take your wife out, and it's like oh. ten gamer score took the wife so out. So there was a, a there, <laughs> there was a situation, and this is when I knew she was the one, uh, where I was playing uh, Roblox on the Xbox for achievements, and like there's uh, <laughs> there's uh, achievements for playing the game uh, every like twenty days in a row or something. Uh, but you have to play it around the same time because it doesn't work properly. So I was set an alarm every day for like 3 p.m. Central to boot up the game. Uh, and then one day I forgot my alarm and she's like, oh, it's like 3.05. Don't you have to boot up Roblox? I'm like, oh, my God, I do. Thank you. Aww. And she saved it. Aww. But no, she'll Aww. help me out with achievements and stuff like that. No, she's great. I love that woman. That she was makes... the moment you knew to propose. That was the moment. I'm like, oh, yeah. hell yeah, I'm going to marry her. Yeah. Then, you, then you had to figure out a way to like <laughs> propose to her in Roblox. To yeah, yeah, yourself. it was very... <laughs> it's very strange yeah i did minecraft let's place for three years and i moved on to roblox bigger and better pastures <laughs> roblox is a fucking juggernaut at the moment man i thought it roblox is. was a meme and i guess it is but i didn't realize how big of a meme it is oh it's huge it now it's huge it is gigantic no it's basically like a free basic version of minecraft for kids you can do mm -hmm. anything you want in it so it's, uh, it's it, pretty it, surreal. Is that is, is that why economy. it's so big, or like, is it actually good as a game, no, or is no, it no, literally no. just it's, children? It's a it's a sandbox, and people can make anything they want. I'll give you guys a great example. When I went to uh, Thanksgiving, my brother has three kids, and they're like nine, ten, seven, whatever. And one of them was playing Roblox, and for about an hour, she played a game where you walk up to a door, and it has a picture of an anime on it, and you have to type the name of the anime, and then the door <laughs> opens. Hell that was yeah. the whole game. She played that for over an hour. Sounds like, Sounds like some of the games I play for achievements. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole point yeah, of Roblox is you let kids just, you give kids a whole bunch of toys and different things to do, and it just never ends because you can make your own little world. And then you could yeah, monetize Minecraft, it too but for free. And in yeah. a browser, yeah, you can make a it, lot yeah. of money. Roblox, Roblox, dude. Though. Yeah. So I think it's more of like a Habbo hotel. I think. That's what I equate it to. No, it's not even close. But you can make your own things in Habbo Hotel. You can make your own mini games and rooms and stuff. I never played like Habbo Hotel. Experience. The only thing I remember is like the old like image, like the pool is the pool has AIDS pool's or something. Closed. Pool's yeah. closed for yeah. AIDS yeah. or yeah. some shit like that. Pool's closed like, due to AIDS yeah, this and is, it's a giant swastika. Yeah, I do remember that image. I'm like, what the fuck Classic. is this game? I'm like, what is Habbo miss, Hotel? Uh, man, I miss when the internet was edgy. I, I really, I miss it every day when that was just all you needed to laugh. Just people people being assholes. I love it. <laughs> uh, what an old image. I know. Yeah. That's his God. Yeah, that is ancient. That's from the internet past. For those um, on audio only, it is the classic meme from Habbo Hotel. Yeah, full clothes. <laughs> oh, yeah, Habbo everybody looks like a, character is, uh, a black character with an yeah, afro. Swastika. Holy shit. Oh, yeah, you, your chat if you're listening it. to this podcast and you don't know what Pool's Closed is, you're, you're a little too young. I'm yeah. sorry to tell you. Yeah, I dude. think, actually, I Internet Historian did a good video on it. I he did a great think. video on oh, it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, he might yeah. have. Yeah. yeah. So go check that out. Holy shit. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right, boys, it's getting pretty uh, Yeah, we should probably early for me. Oh, has it been an hour and a half already? Oh, my God. Yeah, time flies. Yeah, it's like 5 a.m. All right, Ray, we'll see you in another three years. Uh, yeah. Shout out your stuff. <laughs>
Thanks for having me again, gentlemen. <laughs> the next time Jackson needs to rig a contest, you'll be there, Ray. Yeah, yeah. If you guys fucking rigged. If you guys need any achievement help, I'm, I'm the guy. Just hit me up at any time. I love talking achievements. Just let me know. Well, it sounds like you didn't help him. He lost. Yeah, I didn't lose. Well, here's the thing. Even... I didn't expect Charlie to play those games as well. I don't know how he got that list. <laughs> Jackson, well, he, well, he was studying. His, he, yeah, he was studying my game history. Yeah, I, oh, I oh, tracked yeah, I forgot his about true that. achievement list. Yeah, so I, I immediately sent him a message like, "What the fuck are these games?" You know, like, I see. It, that was know, like the one consolation is that I knew that since I played them, Charlie had to that's, play them as well. Fair. <laughs> I don't know if, if Charlie <laughs> played the baby games and real games. I think he wins, dude. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, I don't think so. I think I still played more because he didn't play like strawberry shortcake or whatever. Fuck that strawberry game. Strawberry vinegar. You played well, yeah, one yeah, extra like you stupid don't play game. The adult games. Christ, Jackson. what? Did, Kaya, what don't you understand about it? <laughs> we went by pure gamer score going up. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's uh, play smart. <laughs> yeah, but Ray told us about true gamer score. Yeah. We were going by Dummy. true achievement <laughs> gamer score. That counts for nothing in my Thunderdome. I just like stirring the pot. Gaming. It should be a weighted total, let's be honest. <laughs> yeah. Jesus Christ, but you can't change that in the future just to accommodate Charlie. I just want Charlie win. to win. When yeah, you do it again, it is. let me know. Will do. All yeah, right, right. Dude, I, I even bought an Xbox 360. <laughs> 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 that's hardcore. Some core. games that just yeah, that's some a lot of effort. I, 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 I applaud that. I'm gonna yeah. use it for oh sure. God, I wanna, Charlie I has go back like on twice your score, Jackson. Somebody just posted your profiles in the chat. You you got blown the fuck out. Yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I think you just have to live with this humiliation. Sorry. I, right, I think losers of competition you're genuinely should take us stupid. out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Um, uh, fuck. Did, uh, Ray, did you like shout out your stuff? Tell people where to find you. Oh yeah, I guess. I, I, I guess. Yeah, sure. Uh, you can find me on on uh, Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Ray Narvaez Jr., my full name. Same on Twitter as well. And I have a merch store that I run with my wife at frameratemerch.com. If you want to buy anything, please and thank you. Oh, that's awesome. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to this episode of the official podcast. Make sure you go check out Ray and give him support. Please and thank wherever you. Wherever he is. Um, and you can also support us over at patreon.com slash the official podcast. Uh, we've got bonus episodes over there. Lots of fun times over there to be had. So go check it out if you so please. And we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we hope you have a new happy new year. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Love Bye, you. everyone. Thank you.